Hey everyone, I'm Chris McCormick. In this tutorial, we're gonna be going through a Colab notebook that's gonna show you how to use the RAG question answering system with your own custom corpus of reference text for it to draw its answers from. And as an example data set, we're gonna be using uh, articles from the Game of Thrones, articles about the Game of Thrones TV series that we scraped from a Game of Thrones wiki. In order to use this custom corpus, the main thing that we need to understand is the retriever component of the RAG architecture. So let me give you a brief overview of the overall RAG architecture and where the retriever fits in and our reference text. So here's the high level picture. RAG stands for Retriever Retrieval Augmented Generation. It's a very descriptive and apt name because the model consists of a retriever and a generator. And we're gonna provide reference text that the retriever will retrieve <laughs> and provide to the generator in order to help it generate the answer to the question. So the question goes to the generator as well. And then with the reference text plus the question, we'll get our answer. The retriever is going to find the reference text or the documents that contain the information that it thinks is going to help the generator answer the question that's being posed. So let's take a look at how the retriever accomplishes that in RAG. It's going to use this technique called dense passage retrieval, or DPR, and both RAG and DPR came out of Facebook AI research. DPR, I'm gonna look at, uh, there, there is a pre-processing step for DPR, but I'm gonna show you how it works once that's done first, and then we'll, we'll go see what, what setup needs to happen in order for this to work. So we've got our question, piece of text that we're asking, and naturally we're gonna use a BERT model to address this problem. So we're gonna send the question text through a instance of a BERT model this, uh, this model is going to produce an embedding that represents the question. And so we call this the question encoder. Once we have the embedding that represents the question, we've also got, and this is where the pre-processing comes in, we have this collection of embeddings that represent the different pieces of reference text. So those are called the context embeddings. And the way we're gonna find the most relevant passages to provide to the generator is that we're gonna do a nearest neighbor search between the question embedding and all of these passage embeddings. The way you do a nearest neighbor search is you calculate the similarity between these different vectors, typically using the cosine similarity. So you take the dot product between the question embedding and all of the context embeddings, find the highest resulting scores, and then look these passages up from your collection of your repository of, of text and pass those in to the generator along with the question again. And the generator is actually a instance of a BART model BART is another transformer that includes the ability to generate new text, which is something we need in order to do this question answering. So BART is gonna handle the generation of the answer to our question. So let's look now at the pre-processing step that needed to happen in order to do that retrieval step. You start out with your collection of documents, your reference documents. And I like the term reference text, but in NLP, uh, what you'll see most often is the term context. You'll see that used in the code as well. So this is, for example, our collection of uh, Game of Thrones wiki articles. But we know that BERT has this sequence, input sequence length limitation. It can only take in 512 tokens at a time. So these wiki articles, 512 tokens is you know, a good sized paragraph, basically. And that's too short for most of these wiki articles. So we need to actually 
chunk those articles into shorter passages. So here, with this sort of toy example, I've got four documents, and let's say they all divide up nicely into three passages each. So we had four documents, now we've got 12 passages. And we're gonna feed all of these passages, each one individually, through another BERT instance. The other one I called model number two, this one I called, I'm calling model number one. Just to clarify that they're, they're both BERT, but they're separate instances of BERT, and they, they each have their own set of weights. And this one is called the context encoder because it's gonna generate embeddings to represent our reference text or the context. So that's what produce, pr produces our, our stack of context embeddings that we saw in the previous slide. Okay, so now you've got a general picture of where we're going. Let's, take, let's go back to the notebook and walk through the code for actually doing this. A couple of things I wanna point out about this notebook before we get started. It uh, actually is based on a example script from the Hugging Face Transformers library. So a lot of the code came from that. And then the idea to demonstrate it on Game of Thrones actually came from another library called Haystack. Haystack is a more production-oriented framework for creating question answering systems. And they have an example project that uses a smaller data set on Game of Thrones taken from uh, ordinary Wikipedia. All right, so we, we talked about the overall architecture of RAG and in particular, how the retriever fits into that. One more thing I wanted to cover about the retriever is that after breaking the articles into passages, when we embed them, turn them into embeddings, we actually add the article title. We kind of prepend that to each passage. Um, the title obviously contains a lot of valuable information about what the passage is likely about. So it's a very useful piece of text to include in there. Then we use the SCP token to separate the two and Bert learns that, hey, the tokens to the left of this SCP token uh, seem to be really useful for interpreting this passage. So let's give those more weight. All right. So the code for scraping the wiki is down in the appendix, and I won't go through that in detail, but it was a really interesting uh, experience. There were some interesting problems that, that arose for me in doing that. Um, right, so initially, after scraping it, uh, I was asking the RAG model, who is Arya Stark's father? That's a really easy question. And in fact, the answer is stated quite plainly in the first sentence of Arya Stark's Wikipedia article, or wiki article. Uh, it says Arya Stark is the third child and second daughter of Lord Eddard Stark. So the answer is right there. And I was really surprised to see that RAG was getting that one incorrect. When I went and looked at the article text, this is what I found. Culture, religion, father, mother, siblings, Jon Snow, a spoiler that I won't put in, <laughs> lovers portrayed by Princess Arya Stark as the third child and second daughter. So there's a bunch of these heading type terms with no punctuation between them, just spaces. And then it's a big run on sentence. So the Bird is trying to make sense of this as if it were an actual sentence. So I think it, it makes some sense there that uh, Bert would be confused by this and, and not pull the information it needs from it. Um, so the, the solution to this, yeah, you could tell from looking at the article, it's mostly plain text. However, us humans, we really like to organize information better than just plain text. So there's these tables that kind of summarize some key facts about Aria. Aria. Um, so that's where those, those heading terms are coming from. So what I needed to do was adjust my scraping code to distinguish those headings as, uh, as headings using markdown formatting. And once I did that, um, Bird understood that starting with 
starting here, uh, that's a new that's a new sentence. And yeah, I just I found in general that this was a good way to debug questions that it was getting wrong. I could look at what articles it was retrieving in order to try to answer the question and then see is the information in the article and is there anything about how the information's formatted that might screw screw up Bert or Bart, I guess, in generating the answer. So to look ahead a bit here, we're gonna grab the articles, we're gonna split them into those passages, and then we're gonna encode them with the context encoder. So I do have the code for scraping the wiki, but it's down in the appendix. We're just gonna download the, the zip files or the zip file with all of the text articles in it. Do that, unpack them. See all these different Game of Thrones topics. Okay. Close this out. Yep, and then we need to open up that directory with all the text files in it. We'll use the uh, file name as the title of the article. Open each one. All right, so here we're just loading in the text from each article. And then probably the next, next section here. Yeah, so there's just under 5,000 articles. They're not in any particular order. Apparently the uh, file listing feature in Python doesn't alphabetize. Here's what one of them looks like. And I did learn that Bert cannot take advantage of any new line characters, even though we tend to use those in meaningful ways to separate text, they just get dropped by the tokenizer. So don't assume that new lines are gonna help Bert understand the, the layout of the text. So again, we need to break these articles down into smaller passages that will actually fit in within Bert's input sequence length limitation of 512 tokens. And the way the authors of the Hugging Face Transformers script approached this is they divided the articles into 100 word chunks. So that's not quite the same as BERT tokens. A word can be represented by multiple BERT tokens if it's not in BERT's vocabulary. So 100 words is almost certainly going to turn into more than 100 tokens. On top of that, we're gonna add the title to the passage as well. You could try to be a little smarter about that and tokenize the article and take text as 512 actual tokens, but this seems to work well enough. All right, I won't go through the splitting code. It's a relatively normal Python stuff. But once we split the 5K articles, we get about 43,000 passages. Hey everyone, I wanted to interrupt this tutorial real quick to show you the, the version of it that's on my site. So the, the main purpose of my site is to provide a much better organization of a lot of my material, as well as to give you some premium content that's not available on my blog or on my YouTube channel. So we've got a ebook as well as a video course explaining Bert's architecture, and then lots of tutorials on fine-tuning BERT for various uh, applications, domain-specific stuff, document classification, different variants of BERT. So check out my membership site. Uh, here is the tutorial. The YouTube version, of course, is pretty long. Um, so something I like to do on the site is break it up into more bite-sized segments. So there's little chunks here that you can progress through. And then the uh, product here also has the link to the, the notebook. All right, back to the tutorial, thanks. So the next preparation step we need to do after chunking the, the articles is to generate the embeddings, the context embeddings for DPR. And we have, we've got a couple models for that. We have a 
encoder tokenizer and all right so we'll tokenize all of the passages replace them with their IDs token IDs so we've got 43,000 passages with the longest one being 321 tokens. Okay, so for encoding, we've got to use the GPU. We're going to be running a BERT model to encode these passages. And if you're going to run BERT, you got to use a GPU. So we've got a Tesla P100 attached. We'll load the context encoder model. These, uh, these pre-trained models that we're downloading from the Transformers repository were trained on some question answering benchmarks. NQ stands for natural questions. That's a benchmark from Google. And multiset stands for, or indicates that it's actually a combination of multiple question answering benchmarks that it was fine tuned on. Okay, so I've got a function for formatting uh, timestamps nicely because it will take a little while to encode all of these passages. BERT is fairly slow. <laughs> so we'll run with a batch size of, of 16 passages at a time for each batch. We'll move the batch to the GPU and run, run it through the encoder. And the embeddings for each of those 16 passages are in the pooler output field. So we'll take those off of the GPU, turn them into NumPy arrays, and store them. So with this Tesla P100, it took about eight minutes to encode all 43,000 passages. And since I basically accumulated a list of all the embeddings, we need to concatenate them into a, a single array. So now we've got our DPR embeddings. They're all 768 features because that is the embedding size for BERT. So that's all we need to do to prep our data set in terms of the machine learning steps. There are still a few superficial coding steps that we'll need to do in order to apply RAG to this data set. But before we get into that, I do want to talk about the FACE index. So FACE is a library. It stands for Facebook AI Similarity Search. And it's a library for doing nearest neighbor search. Um, in particular, it includes techniques for doing approximate nearest neighbor search. Uh, KNN can be a very computationally expensive task, especially when your embeddings are 768 features like they are with uh, BERT. Um, I think with, with roughly 40,000 embeddings, um, I'm not sure that a approximate nearest neighbor technique is really necessary, but if you're getting into hundreds of thousands of articles and millions of passages, uh, I could definitely see that the, the brute force nearest neighbor search could, could get really slow. All right, so FACE implements a number of ANN techniques. We will use one of them here, the one that was chosen in the Transformers example script. It's called Hierarchical Navigable Small Worlds, HNSW. So we're defining the index here. We're not actually building the index yet. We're just uh, defining some key parameters. Define our metric as inner product. Yeah, and, and all of the face index types have two steps. You, well, three if you include defining the index, and then you need to call both train and then add. And the add step is the one that is actually going to build the index. So that's the one that takes a while to run. So we'll pass our 
embeddings. That's our, our matrix of 43,000 embeddings of length 768. We'll train the index on that. I think train must mean that it, it just looks at the, the data to extract some key features that it needs. And then when we actually call add, that's where it does all the indexing of the vectors. And then it's set up to do fast searches. So building that index took about three minutes. So this, this step of creating and setting up our own index is actually kind of extra. You don't need to, to do that to work with RAG. There's a, we'll see a little later down that the RAG model will do that for you. However, I found it really interesting to show that here because it can be very helpful to look at the results that are being returned by DPR in order to see whether it's really finding the right passages or not. So that can be very valuable in debugging any issues that you're having with RAG, like we saw earlier with the ARIA start question. So next we'll need to load the question encoder. Remember that there's actually separate BERT models, one for training, uh, one for encoding the passages, and the other for encoding the question text that you submit. So we've already done all the embedding of the passages, so now, now we need to load a question encoder if we want to actually search for relevant passages based on the, the content of the question. So we'll need the question encoder tokenizer as well as the question encoder model. All right, and then we can perform a search based on a question. So who is Arya's father? Tokenize it, move the tokens to the GPU, run it through the question encoder. Grab the embedding, question embedding from the pooler output attribute, move that to the CPU, and we've got our query embedding. So now we're ready to do a nearest neighbor search between that query embedding and all of our context embeddings. So we'll do that with the face index that we built. Call index.search, give it our question embedding, tell it how many results we want to get back, and it will return both the indices of these top three matches as well as the calculated distance or similarity, in this case, values for each of those. You can print those out. We'll see that the best matches are passages 25,296, then 23,757, <laughs> uh, and then here are the inner product values for each of those. And then in order to kind of make any sense of that, obviously, we need to go retrieve the original text that corresponds to those passage numbers. So we use text wrap to print that nicely. And we can go back into our chunked corpus, what I called the collection of passages. And we can print out the title of each passage as well as the passage text itself. Yeah, it's interesting. The, the first result here doesn't seem like the best option. Like it doesn't have Eddard Stark in it anywhere. But the second result does grab the beginning of Arya's uh, wiki article where we saw that the, the answer to the question is clearly stated. So that's good. Yeah, and then I looked at this, you can see the, the passage numbers of these two are very close. And, right. So this is actually the beginning of that article. And then this is a little further down in the article. The article kind of repeats itself a little bit so that that answer is given, yeah, Lord Ned Stark and Lord Eddard Stark. So 
There are actually two answers that would that would be valid here for our question. So I went into a little extra detail there on the face index for similarity search so that we could kind of perform our own searches. But let me show you now what model objects we actually create if you just wanted to go straight into using RAG. So we still needed to do all of that chunking of our articles and encoding of those passages into embeddings. But what we'll need to do in order to work with RAG is we need to use the Hugging Face datasets library and put our reference text and the embeddings into that format. That's what RAG expects from us. And I found that the easiest way to do that and this is actually a, a very helpful suggestion from someone in one of our, our research groups. The, uh, what seems to be the best, most reliable way to do that, fewest issues, is to first create a, a pandas data frame out of the, the data, and then use the Hugging Face data set from pandas uh, API to create the data set from the data frame. So now we've got a data set that has our article titles and article text in it, which is good because when we look up the most relevant passages, we don't send those context embeddings to BART, to the generator. We actually go back and find the original text for that passage, and we give that text to the generator. So that needs to be in the data set. Then we gotta add the embeddings. They're currently a NumPy array, but they need to be a list of arrays instead. So there's probably some elegant way to do that, but I just did a little for loop there. And then we need to add the embeddings to the Hugging Face data set. So add column embeddings. Now we've got that in there as well. Um, right, and then it doesn't look like there's a way to give the data set object the face index that we previously built. So this step is going to repeat that, and I think that's okay, <laughs> not that big a deal. So all you need to do here is define the index like we did previously, and then call this add face index function, where we specify the column containing the vectors to index, what we want the index to be named, uh, and then we give it the index object, which defines the type of index we want to use. And then once we call that, it'll run, add all the vectors, and again, it'll take a little while. I think this says that it, it took two minutes here. Okay. So now, now the reference text is properly formatted in the layout or format that RAG expects. So we can finally load the actual RAG model, give it our data set, and start asking questions and see how it does. Once we've taken care of all of that formatting and embedding that we just went through, the implementation of RAG in the Transformers library actually makes it really easy to work with the RAG framework. There's just a couple components to it, the retriever and the generator. And, oh yeah, an interesting aspect of RAG is that there are two variants of it, RAG sequence and RAG token. We're gonna be using RAG sequence. RAG sequence is less com computationally expensive, but is missing one fairly key feature. With RAG sequence, we're going to find all those passages, and then the generator is actually going to separately generate an answer based on each of those passages, and then it will pick what it thinks is the most probable or best answer from those. What's missing there is that we're not able to incorporate information across multiple passages in order to generate the answer. The RAG token approach does allow for that, but again, more computationally expensive. So it would be interesting to, to give that a shot though and see how that performs. Okay, so we need, we need to load the retriever and the generator. 
called rag retriever dot from pre pre-trained. Load the rag sequence model, fine-tuned on Google's natural questions data set. Don't use the dummy data set, we've got our own custom one. And it needs to be indexed first, so we've got our index data set here. And it needs to know the name of the face index within the data set, and we, we named it embeddings. Okay, so that's, that's the retriever. Yeah, I would love to know how many, what the default uh, value of K is for the nearest neighbor search. How many passages does it return by default? All right, and then we do need a, we do need a tokenizer. Uh, it does require us to do the tokenization step for our question. So load that, and then we gotta load the generator. So the class name is rag sequence for generation, which sounds kind of strange, right? It, it seems like maybe it should be rag for sequence generation, but as we just talked about, there's rag token and rag sequence, and this is rag sequence. So that is named correctly. Load rag sequence, and got our, got our BART model loaded. So now we are ready. We've got those objects. We gave them our data set. Everything's set to go. All right, and here are the steps. So we need to take our question string and have it tokenized. Right, okay. The, the tokenizer is different for the question encoder because that's a BERT model versus the tokenizer for BART. Um, so we need to specifically grab, we've got, our, we've got our tokenizer for the generator, that's what this object is, but we need to use the tokenizer from the question encoder. So that gets, uh, gets us our, our tokens for the question, and then Everything, everything meaningful happens in this line right here. Model.generate, give it our question. It's going to spit out the answer generated. However, it does return it as a sequence of tokens, which we don't want to see individual tokens. We want a nice sentence to read. So we will decode those tokens back into a single string. And then we can print our question and our answer and how long it took. Who is Arya's father? Answer is Lord Eddard Stark. Nice, got that correct. And that took almost three minutes to reply and to answer. Um, and that's fairly typical. It seems to vary a lot from question to question, which is pretty interesting. I'd be curious to know where that variation comes from, but uh, two to three minutes is actually pretty typical. So pretty heavy duty framework here. And this is with RAG sequence. This is with the less computationally expensive model. Okay, and then I do have a bunch of example questions to ask it that we can look at. In order to do that, I defined a, a little helper function so that we can you know, not, not replicate all those little steps every time. We can just ask a question, have it print out the answers. So here we go. Where is Theon Greyjoy from? The Iron Islands, yep, that's correct. What is the title of the first episode? It's called Winter is Coming. And it returned a empty string, which is pretty interesting. I think that must mean that RAG does have a feature for returning nothing when its confidence is too low in its answer. So that, that can be a helpful feature. A little surprised that I didn't get that answer be interesting to look at the at the search results for that, the re, what the retriever is pulling up. Who succeeded Robert Baratheon on the Iron Throne? That's kind of the very beginning of the series. Joffrey was next, got that right. All right, so those were some questions I came up with, um, and Nick as well. Uh, there is, we found like an online quiz, you know, Game of Thrones trivia basically. It was multiple choice, so, uh, that makes the questions a little different, but we copied some of those over here to see how well the model did. 
Beginning of the series, how many children do Ned and Catelyn Stark have? So they've got five children together if you don't count Ron, uh, Jon Snow. Um, and it answers Ron Stark, <laughs> which makes no sense at all. Um, I did, you know, I've, as I've kind of debugged this and tried to improve things, maybe improve the formatting of the articles, the which questions it gets right versus wrong uh, seems to vary. Um, earlier on, it got this one correct. It said, it said six instead of five, which I think is valid if you include Jon Snow. Um, maybe Bert or Bart isn't as good at, at counting things, right? It, in order to do this, like you could have, it could say Ned and Catelyn Stark are parents to these people. And so Bert, Bart, excuse me, would have to be able to count up uh, the number of people in that sentence and return a number. But it did do it previously, so it's not, uh, not impossible. <laughs> yeah, another one incorrect here. All right. Yeah, which cast member did Kit Harrington? Kit Harrington's Jon Snow. Who did he marry? He married Rose Leslie. Nice. So there's a handful more of those in here. Um, I think in order to continue improving on this, because I, I would really like to see it do better on questions like how many children did they have and um, what else did we get wrong? Yeah, who's the first character to be called King in the North? That feels uh, like it ought to be doable. Ooh, actually, though, I did look into this one. According to legend, the first king of the north was Brandon Stark, better known as Bran the Builder, who lived 8,000 years ago. Yeah, okay. So this is actually correct. It seems to come from maybe the maybe from the books rather than the, the TV series. Um, and it's not really, uh, you know, if you're going off of the TV series, then the answer would be Rob Stark. But if you're going off the entire history of Westeros, then I guess it's this Brandon Stark guy. Anyway, things that I would try next. Uh, I'd like to try fine-tuning the model on some example Game of Thrones question and answer pairs. I think it'd be, I think that's a, uh, a useful thing to demonstrate how to do. Presumably, it would do better because it would start to learn a bit about the Game of Thrones universe. There's tons of names and terms in there that it certainly didn't learn from Google's natural questions data set. So fine tuning seems like it ought to help. Let's see if I had some notes here about what else I wanted to try. Reflections on accuracy, yep. Ha. What's it doing? I'm uh, down in the appendix, right? That's my scraping. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it's just down at the bottom. Right. Yeah, it'd be good to get a little more scientific with the with measuring the results. I kind of just have my 10 or 15 questions and would after I'd make some change, I'd kind of go look. Uh, was that qualitatively at, at how well it did? Um, but I could build more of a test set somehow and see if I could make it more measurable. Right, yeah, and then it would be interesting to try out RAG token, see exactly how much slower it is compared to RAG sequence and whether it does a lot better or not. And then, right, in order to fine tune, I would have to spend an hour or two just kind of creating some question and answer pairs, probably based off of the information in the wiki, and then implement the fine tuning. Another strategy that people have tried is to take the headings from the articles and kind of append those to the titles, since those headings and subheadings are also really inf useful information. So that'd be another thing to try that wouldn't be overly difficult. But yeah, there we go. 
Um, so this isn't the end of this topic. We've looked here at the retriever. We've looked at how you can get it to work with your own data set. But I do still want to go into more depth on the generator and the fine tuning process. So there'll be more, more to come on this topic. Thank you.